By the end of this video, you will have five of the best tips that will actually help you to get into the top 1%. Well, the top 1%ers are not everyone. That's why they're called the top 1%. Uh, if you're going to be an average performer, like at your job, at your business, uh, you can do what everyone else does. Uh, you can uh, work eight hours, uh, have fun the other hours, uh, go to sleep, eat and repeat every day. But if you want to be into the top 1%, you need some extra stuff. So basically, I will give you five of the best tips that helped me and help lots of others to get into the top 1% in every niche, every kind of business. Uh, the first thing would be the skills. Uh, there are two kinds of skills, the technical skills and the business skills. So the technical skills, you're not born with those. You will not have the talent to have all the technical skills. The technical skills are something that will be built, that will be learned throughout all of your journey until you become a professional. In different niches, let's say on software engineering or on cybersecurity, lately all my videos have been about these two, uh, you will need some really interesting skills. It's not just coding or not just knowing Linux or another operating system. Uh, you gotta know how the logic works. You gotta understand how people work, how the business works, how all the backend works. Uh, you can learn some pieces of code by heart. You can learn how to like create a variable or even an object. You will never learn the strategic thinking that goes into it. Uh, in cybersecurity, it's also the same thing. Uh, not everyone can be a penetration tester. Not everyone can be a really good cybersecurity engineer. Well, you can get a job, but you cannot be the best. It's not as simple as learning some commands on Linux. Uh, basically, when you're pen testing or you're testing the security of a company, of a business, if you only know the commands, if you only know some like small frameworks, you're just like everybody else. Everyone knows that. It's stuff that can be learned like pretty easily. But if you know how to work around, if you know how to think out of the box, like some critical thinking, you will be at least on the top 10%, maybe not 1%, but you will be in the top 10%. I also mentioned some other kind of skills. These are the soft skills. Uh, you've probably seen most of the software developers, all these tech bros that are into YouTube everywhere. Uh, what they do is they stay home all day. Stay home at the computer, go work and go to sleep again. Um, all these people, they have all the technical skills needed to perform at the job, but not a lot of those know how to speak with someone, how to treat someone properly, how to treat the company, uh, how to like talk with other business people. Uh, if you can communicate someone like your technical skills and tell them, hey, this code does this, this code does that. If the other party is not a technical person, they won't understand a thing that you said. You will have to develop soft skills. You will have to develop techniques on how to talk to people, how to be more empathic to them, because on the workplace everything happens every day and there's lots of drama probably so you gotta understand on how to navigate all these drama and be like much better than everyone else the second skill that or the tip that i can give you is that you gotta stay current with the new trends uh, if you're left behind if you've like uh, if you've mastered the windows 98 that not ev not everyone knows nowadays in fact nobody almost uses it uh, that won't be of work to anyone uh, if you're up to date with all the new trends, if you're up to date with all the new technologies that have emerged, you will be able to not only switch job, but even update your position. Uh, if you're just a simple software engineer and the new project needs your specialization, you will be able to hop onto that with ease, we can say, and you will be able to climb up the ranks easily. The third part would be portfolio management. Uh, I know a lot of people who are really good with their skills. I know a lot of people who are really good developers, designers, programmers, you can call them however you want, uh, but not a lot of them have a good portfolio. Like basically, if you ask them what their portfolio is, they will send you their CV, they will send you their LinkedIn link, LinkedIn link, that's interesting. Uh, and uh, they will tell you where have they worked before. Uh, but not a lot of them will show you what they have done before. Well, I understand you've been a software engineer, but what project did you work in? Uh, what people did you work with? Uh, did you learn new technologies? What languages did you work in? Uh, the portfolio management is one of the, let's say, most important things that will help you show other people what you have done and what you are able to do. Uh, the job position uh, won't be maybe always necessary for people if you've been, let's say, at a company no one knows if you work good or bad they only know that you work there but if you have a portfolio to show if you have projects if you have like full-on reports about what you've done uh, the other party will know much easier if you're good at that stuff or you haven't done them properly the fourth point would be time management uh, not a lot of people understand that uh, when you're let's say a senior you've done like a couple years at your job 
uh, you've started to climb up the ranks, you will have less time because new tests are going to be brought upon you new people are going to come visit you new projects are going to come to you maybe not just at the job maybe private projects will come to you maybe you'll start your own business and uh, it's not the same if you're managing a business with like five to ten employees and it's a pretty different thing when you're managing it with 20 25 30. i've been at the 20 mark and it's a whole big difference. Well, we talked about all these skills. Most of you will ask me, where do I get them from? There are two ways. You can go onto YouTube, scroll endlessly, never choose a language, or you can go to a three, five year university, get a degree, and there's other options. I've talked about them before, but one of the best options I know would be coursecareers.com. It's one of the greatest platforms I can say to ever exist for new and upcoming software engineers. If you wanna learn coding, they have this tutorial, where if you sign up to like their platform they will tell you hey if you're interested in this you can have a free trial you can look into it look how it works and then you can pay for the whole thing so basically you don't need to pay for anything beforehand so for everyone watching if you're still at this mark go on to course.careers.com join subscribe or like pay what you want and in three months after you finish the course of course if you buy it uh, please let me know in the comments contact me privately if it worked for you it worked for thousands of fathers, so I'm pretty sure it can work for you as well. And we're into the final part, the fifth part, the business knowledge. Um, I mentioned in the, in the beginning, you gotta know how the business works. You gotta understand that the business is to get money in and like try to treat all the employees nicely. That's the second thing, not everyone does that, we all know it. But the idea of the business is you gotta understand the profit the company is making. If a company has gotten a project and uh, they're getting like $30,000 for it, they're not going to pay you $25,000 to complete the project because you already have a base salary. But even if they wanted to give you a percentage, you got to understand that it, they have a margin profit. They're not doing it for free only to get the revenue. In the beginning, every business knows that if you're generating like $100 million a year in revenue, but you're getting like $500,000 in profit, that's not a lot of money for the business because there are other employees but you and you gotta understand how the business works. Uh, the other part would be the taxes. Not a lot of people understand how taxes work and when they start a business and they haven't checked all these boxes out, they will get uh, violated, they will violate the law, they may get different fines and they will never be able to perform good on their business or on their job because they won't have the time because they're always doing other things like uh, seeing how to lower the fines, seeing how to lower the taxes, not pay good taxes. But taxes not, I cannot stress this enough, if you understand how the numbers work in the business, you are set up for success. Not a lot of people know this, not a lot of people know how, how much money goes in, how much money goes out, and in the end they lose. The other business skills would be partnerships. Uh, you should be able to create partnerships, you should be able to connect with other people. Uh, I've heard this saying like in the last year like probably more than a thousand times, but it's actually true. Like your network is your net worth. Uh, if you're creating a good network with uh, good partners, good businesses, uh, people who have money, we can say in a way, uh, you will be able to bring money in. Why? Because you have something that all of your partners need and they are more than willing to pay you for it, maybe even more than they would pay someone else. Uh, so basically networking in uh, probably in every niche, but especially on the tech niche, on literally software engineering, cyber, networking, everything that you've chosen to do, the network is the best thing you can create over the years because if you're creating a good network with uh, all these tech tech geeks we can call them in a way uh, you'll be able to find projects more easily if you don't want to if you want to quit the job go into another job you will do it more easily because you will have people who will refer you to their companies we said we need skills we need business we need technical skills soft skills we need knowledge and all of that but if you're taking all of the five steps I mentioned seriously and you've started to implement them in your professional life, you will probably have it much more easier than I did. I did some mistakes that I'm not proud of, but if I had someone to tell me all of these steps beforehand, I'll be, I'll probably would be in a much better place today. Let me know if you liked the video, subscribe to the channel, press the notification bell, and see you in the next video. As always, this is AG signing off.